Textual Python package for text UIs. It has a reactive system. You assign some values, stuff redraws. How does that work? Let's take a look inside the code, this time with 42% more production value. Hi, I'm Paul Everett, Python Oldster. This is inside the code where I find some stuff that tickles my funny bone and go look and see how it's implemented. As always, today I'm talking about Textual from Will McGugan. Why am I talking about Textual? Because I'm doing a webinar September 21st with Will. No kidding, it's gonna be good. I've prepared for it. Now, a long time ago, I said this, uh, reactive, which should be the subject of another one of my inside the code videos. So the time for maybe is now. Let's fire up PyCharm and go poke around inside this reactive thingy and see how Will implemented it. I'm in Will's calculator example. Where is it? It's in examples, calculator.py. I'm looking at the calculator class. It's a subclass of grid view. Views are part of what we'll be talking about in the webinar. Come and see us, ask questions. I'll go ahead and run this thing. Oop. I'll go ahead and run this thing. And it appears on the side and here's the display. And as I give input, um, this is a little artifact. Uh, doesn't happen when we run in the regular terminal. Um, it updates the display. So how is that actually happening? It's happening using reactive programming. How does Will implement that? So let's go over to calculator and he's got something called display. That's the thing I'm looking for. And it is an instance of a reactive thingy. What is the reactive thingy? Let's go navigate over to it, take a look. And one thing that's interesting about it, we saw in the pop-up, is it says it's a descriptor. And there's a second thing that's cool about this from a Python type hinting perspective, which is this generic thing. We're not gonna talk about the generic thing today. We're just gonna focus on the descriptor part of the equation. So when I say display equal blah, blah, so the right-hand side says blue blue with an initial value of zero and it binds it to display in the thing called calculator. We start getting into the Python descriptor protocol. So if you go look up like on real Python has a good tutorial about descriptors, it's a little bit of a new area for me, an area that I wish I would have known about a long time ago for people who build things consumed by other people, which is what Will is doing for you with this reactive thing. You don't really even have to know what's happening behind the scenes. It might be magical. Narrator, it is magical. But you don't have to understand that, you just use it. It just looks like you created an instance of something. But behind the scenes, a couple of things are going on that are pretty cool. Python steps in. Descriptor protocol. Protocol kind of means there's an object involved and it has some capabilities and the outside world is going to work with that object. In this case, the class called reactive and instances of, instances of reactive. And the conversation between the outside world and your thing is rich and it has different parts to it. And that's called a protocol. One of the protocol things is you can implement something called set name. And Python will go and grab this owner thing and a name and pass it into you. So what are these things? Well, he's trying to help you a little bit by telling you message target. And so let's go take a look at message target. It's a protocol, not an implementation, not a class or something like that. It's a protocol. And these are the two contracts in the protocol. A me uh, a descriptor owner needs to be able to post messages either synchronously or asynchronously. So going back to where we were, uh, the code will then start doing some things. Well, how do you, seeing the flow of this in the abstract is a little bit tough. 
So why don't we just run it again? But let's put a breakpoint here. I'm going to run it. PyCharm is going to fire up. And I want to step over until I get to um, my display variable. Layout size. So we're going through a whole bunch of things that are kind of in the framework. Haven't gotten to my code yet. I could set a conditional breakpoint uh, to get faster to display. He's got a lot of reactive stuff, doesn't he? Why don't we go ahead and do that? I will say name equal. No, that's not what I wanted. Name equal display. Now I will fast forward to that. Okay, now I'm in kind of my code, the calculator example. I go to special variables. Owner is, ta-da, the class that is, this is a attribute, class attribute of. We'll go back to it. Oop. This. So it's saying owner is that. And this is a way for me to kind of bind bind to the thing that I'm bound to, so to speak. Uh, in my descriptor, I might use this descriptor in multiple classes. How will I know in what case am I in the class what, or what class am I in for that? All right. And so as I walk through this, it gets pretty interesting. I skipped over all of this. It wasn't true. He's got this special protocol for computed things. And here he's sniffing to see if the class has an attribute Dunder computes. This is really related to another part of the machinery that he has. And he's looking to see, have we already run and we already stored this computes valuable on the owner? This is the first time we're running. We haven't done any of that. So now I'm going to go and get the name, which is display. And I'm going to store on something internal so I can disambiguate between the original and the new thing that I'm storing as the display. I'm going to store a Dunder display for the internal name. And I'm going to store that value on the owner. So this is all pretty cool. Let's see what happens a little bit later if I were to set that value. I want to set display. And this is where the reactive system really starts to kick in. So I will go and take off this breakpoint up here and skip forward. And now I'm doing an assignment. In this case, I'm assigning the uh, string re uh, calculator test. And this is being assigned to the internal name of Dunder title. So I want to change this breakpoint and I want it to be um, self dot name equal display. And I will continue onward. And nothing is, is yet assigning the display. So if I come over here, and click on something, the display is now assigned. I didn't get this set up to lay out in console mode. I'll go back to the debugger and we'll walk through it. What happens when you assign a value? Well, then you gotta go look for anything that is watching that value. In this case, it's display on the calculator. I'm going to step over. I'm gonna get the current value because maybe it didn't actually change. If there was an assignment, and I am assigning the same thing that was just there. Don't fire all the watchers. I'm going to switch to current value. Current value is zero. I'm going to look to see if there was a validation function. Part of the protocol, part of what will supports in textual is your classes can have special names to make sure values that are being assigned to a reactive value meet some kind of condition. I do not have a validate function on that class, so I'll skip over that. Now, is this true? Is the new value different than the old value? Let's step over it and see why, yes, it is. 
and I will continue stepping and I'm going to set the value and then the magic occurs. Is anything watching display? Does anything want to be notified when display changes? Let's step into that. So check watchers is actually a class method. It's a class method on what? It's a class method on reactive. And it needs to be passed in the things that it needs in order to go find these watchers. I'm going to step over. And I'm going to go grab any watch functions. This is a watch function. Do we have a watch function? Yes, we do. Watch under display on calculator. So let me go to watch under display. This is on my class, the thing we we're just on. So there's display and here's some code that's watching for changes on display. And if the display changes, I'm going to run this code. So go back to where the framework was doing this. It's going to say, yes, it is a callable. And then some of Will's really cool, this is like the innermost loop on the reactive system. The object has a method that we just saw the protocol for this, post message, no wait. And so it has to implement that. And uh, I think we get our implementation of this via the superclass, grid view, which gets it from view, if I remember correctly. So def post. No, then it must come from widget. All right, going back. And uh, we're going to go call all the watchers and we're going to send an event that's a callback and we're going to pass in the information that's needed to go run that function. Let's step into that. This is going into the callback. I will step out of that and then continue. Step into that. And so we now see this is on the message pump. All right, this was interesting. I got this wrong. This is not uh, the kind of dispatcher thing isn't on a method of my thing, the calculator. It's a method of the system and it needs to be passed in the calculator object that was the source of all this stuff. So we're in kind of the event dispatcher, publisher, subscribe, pub sub, whatever you want to call it. This is the heart of the reactive programming. So all this code goes through, puts things on queues, things get drained and stuff gets called that said, I'm watching the display. When it changes, run me.